Right, uh, okie doke, very quick intro, um, but tell me what you do and what you're in charge of and that sort of thing, because I don't you, think a lot of people knew sure. that you did what you do. So uh, I'm Juan Diego, I'm the global head of Deliveroo for Business. Deliveroo for Business is essentially the B2B uh, arm of Deliveroo. So what we do is we sign up uh, companies and offer them a suite of tools and services so they can offer food for their employees or for any type of food at the workplace, and we also do events and we do something else, hotels, which might we might talk later on. Um, but yeah, so essentially it all has to do with uh, if food is delivered to a workplace, it's typically done through the Deliveroo for Business and we have a team around the world working with different corporations, large and small, to make sure that the employees are happy eating good food. Brilliant. Tell me a little bit more about the British food industry right now and what it's going to be like in the next 24 months. So. Um, I think there's going to be a number of changes, uh, and they're already happening, but those changes are, will continue to happen over the next 24 months. Essentially, what we're seeing is a lot of consumers voting with their wallet, and what they do is, especially young consumers, before they would like, uh, they would go out and eat at restaurants. Now they're still doing that, um, but they're also ordering a ton of food home, not just from your traditional uh, restaurants that are like quick service restaurants, but also increasing the percentage of time that they order from good restaurants to their home, which we have been seeing like over the last two years, but I think it's just going to continue to accelerate. Um, pr prior to this role, I was actually general manager of Deliveroo in Barcelona. At the beginning, I was on the street speaking to like restaurants, and at the beginning, they were very curious about where this was going to go. That that question's no longer here at all. It's uh, you know the the delivery industry for higher end restaurants or different types of like healthy restaurants uh, will continue to grow. And to my second point, health is such a huge thing right now. Uh, before, people used to you know, order whatever home. Now you have a lot more uh, focus on healthy food, on vegan food. I just had my first Beyond Burger recently, and I loved it. So I was, uh, I was really excited about that. And I think that will just continue to increase a por as a portion of the market, not only in Britain, but also around the world. It's the type of health consciousness that didn't exist a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And the final thing that I would say, and this is more of like a personal view, is uh, I think there's going to be some, um, continue to be more trials when it comes to uh, uh, delivery types. So we are seeing some trial in Mil Milton Keynes with some companies where they're doing robots doing delivery. And I don't know where exactly it's going to go, whether it's going to be like 24 months, but I'm pretty sure there's going to continue to be different trials on, on those types of, uh, of delivery systems, which um, I think would be, uh, I think it's going to be completely different from what we've seen before. So do you have plans for robot delivery? Uh, we don't. Um, we are, we're, look, we're looking at the space, and I, I look at the space personally. But uh, we're now really focused on making sure that our, our fleet, our human fleet, is just as efficient as possible. Yeah. OK. Um, we're going to hear a bit more about Amazon uh, later on. Sure. But they've just closed their takeaway service, yeah. which I'm sure you were dis devastated about. Um, <laughs> sure. How to keep ahead of competitors um, with what they're doing. You know, you've got a lot of um, you know, people that are doing different things yeah. but also now encroaching yeah. on your territory. Yeah, I, I think it's, the answer is easy. You just need to be innovating as fast as you can, uh, as much as you can. So initially, we were the first to market to go really, really big with uh, delivery-only kitchens, which is called Deliveroo Editions for us, uh, where, where we enable a restaurant to open a delivery-only kitchen in a different part of the city. And what we've seen in the industry is everybody's been, you know, going after this after we've gone pretty big. Uh, so uh, we've also done uh, Deliveroo Plus, which is subscription. Uh, very big push around the world with uh, getting people to pay um, a monthly subscription so they can get free delivery. That's something that wasn't as big just a couple years ago. Um, and also like Marketplace Plus for us, which is where we have restaurants that do their own delivery, which is something that some of our competitors have been like, you know, not focused on, focused on for such a long time. We just launched it and did a big push and that like uh, was in the news. So overall, I would say, and it's, it's a big theme for me, that you, you always need to be questioning yourself, you know, what comes next? Because otherwise you get left behind and the second you get left behind, the second you have to close. And that's what we've seen with a lot of our competitors around the world. So you mentioned there uh, virtual kitchens and that sort of stuff. Let's, let's touch upon that. Um, virtual sure. brands are also coming out, sure. remote kitchens. Yeah. What are the opportunities um, right now for brands with that sort of arena? It's huge because uh, initially, like a lot of the brands, or you have a, you're a restaurant owner or you, you, have, you have a restaurant brand and you want to open in a different part of the city, but you don't want to make that investment, we will you know, identify like where are lacks of demand in different parts of the city, and then we'll work with different partners to uh, open up these delivery kitchen, these delivery only kitchens, um, so that they can expand their footprint and grow with us. At the end of the day, like restaurants are, like we see ourselves as, you know, a partner to the restaurant to help them grow. So we're just getting started, and we have now, like, you know, 
so it's dozens and dozens of kitchens uh, around the world. And when it comes to virtual brands, um, we're experimenting with, I mean, we, we launched a five million uh, pound fund to invest in, uh, in chefs and in different brands so they can launch their own new concepts, maybe using the same ingredients, but with the delivery only concept. So that enables them as well to reach a different part of the, uh, uh, a different part of the audience that they have, but we're still leveraging the kitchens that they, the, that they have on their own. So it's really interesting for us. We're going to see a ton of new brands come into the market. So uh, you mentioned a bit earlier about data that you can collect and have sure. and that sort of thing. Data-wise, um, how much do you know about us and how much access can these guys get to it? Um, so any, you know. we're really focused on, obviously, like any companies right now trying to protect the, the individual data, so we're super, super focused on that. Now, what we do use is metadata. So, for example, we're seeing that there are, um, you know, there's not like a lot of supply of uh, pizzas in this part of the city, then we'll use that to try, you use that data on, a, on that metadata to try to put a Deliveroo Editions kitchen in that part of the city and focus that a Deliveroo Editions kitchen on pizzerias, Italian food, whatnot. Uh, on, you know, like any company right now with GDPR really focused on protecting the individual's data. We don't want to like, you know, end up on the news for any of that. Okay, well dodged. Uh, okay, who are your <laughs> clients at the moment and how are you saving them money? I remember we talked about canteen killers. Sure, yes. So on the Deliveroo for Business side, uh, we have clients, our companies, the clients that are, uh, companies that are our clients, we see all types of sizes. So we work with some of the biggest banks around the world and law firms, but we're also working with tech companies. We're also working with a ton of SMBs um, and uh, hotels. Um, so the way that we do, and the different use cases, the, the use cases are various, right? So for example, for an investment bank or for a law firm, it's gonna be their employees are staying late in the office, so the company covers for their dinner and they use Deliveroo for business to get to order their dinner. And at this stage, uh, we save the money essentially by allowing, I mean, I, I used to work uh, in finance ages ago and I hated doing like, you know, expense reporting and stuff like that. It was a ton of like loss of time for me with Deliveroo for business, you just order, you don't have to worry about that because it's already baked into the, uh, into the system. With smaller SMBs, like we work with a, num a large number of caterers around the world, so what we do is we try to find the best like, options for them whenever they're doing corporate events or events like these, so that we can uh, give them price competitive versus like you know, just going directly to uh, to like just one caterer in one sense. We'll scope the market to find good deals for them, and I mean, hotels is a different animal, but uh, I think we're going to touch on it later.